In the dim light of my desk lamp, scattered papers and clippings about missing livestock in a remote Texas town seem to mock my efforts for a breakthrough story. As a journalist, I've chased shadows before, but this felt different. Each article, each witness account, hinted at a sinister pattern, a mystery cloaked in fear and whispered superstitions. They called it the Chupacabra. Driving into town, the weight of the desolate landscape pressed heavily against the windows of my car. The vast, open skies of Texas, usually a source of awe, felt oppressive under the burden of the unknown. As I pulled into the small, seemingly abandoned town, the setting sun cast long shadows, turning benign buildings into lurking figures. My first stop was the local diner, a place that, according to my research, served as the unofficial meeting spot for town gossip. The bell above the door announced my entry, drawing curious glances from the few patrons scattered around. I chose a seat at the counter, ordered a coffee, and tried to blend into the background, eavesdropping on hushed conversations that danced around the edges of the recent livestock mutilations. Another one last night, over by the Miller's farm, a grizzled old man whispered to his companion, barely audible over the clink of spoons against ceramic. Whole town's on edge. They say it ain't no coyote or mountain lion. Marks don't match. And the way the blood's gone. It's unnatural, his friend replied, glancing around as if the mere mention might invoke the creature. The server, a middle-aged woman with a kind face but tired eyes, slid a coffee toward me. Not from around here, are you? She asked, her tone friendly but cautious. I offered a smile, trying to appear less like an outsider. Just passing through. Heard some stories, though, about the attacks. Sounds pretty bad. Her expression darkened, and she leaned in slightly, lowering her voice. You do well not to poke around in business that ain't yours. Some stones are better left unturned. Her warning hung in the air as she moved away to tend to other customers, leaving me with a sinking feeling in my stomach. The atmosphere in the diner had shifted. The air felt charged with an unspoken tension. Determined to uncover the truth, I spent the next day interviewing locals, collecting fragmented tales of nocturnal terror that painted a picture of a creature both cunning and brutal. Each account was different yet eerily similar, describing a beast capable of evading capture and leaving behind nothing but blood-drained corpses and fear. As night fell, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The stories had woven themselves into a tapestry of terror that clung to me, a stark reminder that I was no longer just an observer, but a participant in this unfolding nightmare. With my camera and notebook as my only allies, I set out under the cloak of darkness, driven by a need to uncover the truth about the chupacabra, unaware that the night had its own secrets to reveal. The distant howls of coyotes and the rustle of the wind through the brush seemed to whisper warnings, urging me back to the safety of my rented room. But the story was out there, in the shadows waiting to be told, and I couldn't turn back now. Armed with a flashlight and the courage born of naivety, I ventured beyond the edge of town where civilization gave way to the untamed wilderness of Texas. The night was a blanket of darkness, punctuated only by the occasional glimmer of stars peeking through the restless clouds. My destination was the Miller's Farm, the most recent site of the inexplicable attacks. As I navigated the rough terrain, the stories of the townsfolk echoed in my mind. Descriptions of a creature with glowing eyes, sharp, spined back, and an insatiable thirst for blood. A predator unlike any known wildlife stalking the edges of this community. The logical part of my brain chastised me for chasing myths, but the journalist in me hungered for the truth. Approaching the farm, an uneasy silence enveloped the area. The usual nighttime chorus of insects and nocturnal creatures was conspicuously absent, as if even they feared what lurked in the darkness. I clicked on my flashlight, its beam cutting through the night, and proceeded with caution, my heart racing with every step. The first sign that something was amiss was the fence, or more accurately, the breach in the fence. 
Jagged edges of wire gaped like an open wound, suggesting a forceful entry or escape. I scanned the ground, finding a trail of disturbed earth and trampled grass leading toward the barn, a silent sentinel in the night. With every fiber of my being screaming against it, I followed the trail, my flashlight revealing the chaos within the barn. The air was thick with the metallic tang of blood, and the dim light illuminated a scene of carnage. Several sheep lay motionless, their bodies bearing the unmistakable precise wounds I'd heard described in hushed tones. Documenting the scene with my camera, I felt a primal fear take root in my chest. This was no wild animal's work. The precision of the attacks was chilling. As I turned to leave, a sudden noise froze me in my tracks. A soft, guttural growl resonated through the barn, the sound seemingly coming from everywhere and nowhere. Panic gripped me as I realized I was not alone. Something moved in the shadows, agile and silent, save for the soft sound of its movement through the straw. My light frantically swept across the barn, catching glimpses of a form that seemed to dance just beyond the edge of visibility. Eyes, reflective and intense, met mine for a fleeting moment before disappearing into the darkness. Heart pounding, I backed toward the barn door, never turning my back on the shadows. The growl grew louder, a warning that I was trespassing into the domain of a predator. As I reached the safety of the open night, a piercing shriek rent the air, a sound so filled with hunger and rage that it seemed to chill the very blood in my veins. I ran, not daring to look back, the shriek echoing in my ears, a haunting reminder that the chupacabra was more than just a legend. It was real, and now it was aware of me. The mystery had deepened, drawing me further into its web, and as I fled back toward the safety of the town, I knew that my investigation had crossed a threshold. There was no turning back now. The creature of the night had marked me, and my quest for the truth had become a fight for survival. The cold sweat of fear clung to me as I stumbled back into the dimly lit streets of the town. The once comforting glow of the street lamps now seemed to cast ominous shadows, twisting familiar shapes into menacing figures. My breath came in ragged gasps, each step propelled by the primal urge to escape the horrors that lurked in the darkness behind me. The chilling shriek of the chupacabra echoed in my mind, a relentless reminder that the night held secrets mankind was not meant to know. Seeking refuge in my rented room, I bolted the door behind me the false sense of security doing little to calm my frayed nerves. My hands trembled as I reviewed the night's footage, the grainy images of the barn massacre, a stark testament to the reality of the beast. Yet, it was the brief glimpse of those glowing eyes that haunted me, a visual embodiment of the predator that now hunted the edges of my consciousness. Sleep was an elusive companion that night, my mind a whirlwind of fear and fascination. The journalist in me was driven by the story of a lifetime, while the human side grappled with the terror of being hunted. As dawn broke, casting a pale light through the curtains, I realized that the investigation had become personal. The chupacabra wasn't just a story anymore, it was a threat to the town, and unwittingly, I had stepped into the role of its adversary. Determined to seek answers, I ventured out at first light, the town now bathed in the deceptive calm of morning. My first stop was the local library, a repository of regional history and lore that I hoped would shed light on the origins of the chupacabra myth. The librarian, an elderly woman with an air of having seen it all, watched me with keen interest as I pored over old newspapers and books. Hours slipped by as I delved into the history of the area, discovering tales of unexplained phenomena dating back centuries. Yet, it was a series of articles from the late 19th century that caught my eye, reports of mysterious livestock deaths that bore a striking resemblance to the current events. The descriptions varied, but the fear was a constant thread, a timeless echo of the terror that now gripped the town. As I gathered my notes, the librarian approached, her voice low and tinged with caution. You're chasing shadows, young one. Some truths are better left undiscovered.
Her words meant as a warning only fueled my resolve. There was a connection, a pattern that spanned generations, and I was determined to unravel it. Leaving the library, I decided to revisit the site of the attacks, this time in the safety of daylight. The desert, so foreboding under the cloak of night, now seemed almost serene, its vast expanse a stark contrast to the darkness that inhabited it. Yet, as I approached the miller's farm, an uneasy feeling settled over me, a sense of being watched. My investigations were interrupted by a sudden rustle in the brush, a brief glimpse of movement that set my heart racing. Instinctively, I turned my camera towards the sound, catching a fleeting image of something that defied explanation. It was a creature, yet unlike any known wildlife, its form obscured by the brush, but its presence undeniable. As I reviewed the footage, a shadow fell over me, chilling in its intensity. The realization hit me like a physical blow. I was not the hunter, but the hunted. The chupacabra, a creature of myth and nightmare, had marked me as its next target. The heartbeat of the desert, once a symbol of life and resilience, had become a drumbeat of impending doom. And as I raced back to the safety of the town, the true horror of my situation became clear. I was alone, pursued by a predator that defied the laws of nature, and the mystery I sought to unravel might well be my undoing. The return to the town was a blur of adrenaline and fear. My mind raced with the image of the creature captured on my camera, a fleeting glimpse that confirmed the nightmares were real. The town, once a quaint backdrop for my investigation, now felt like a fragile sanctuary against the dark forces lurking just beyond its borders. I needed allies, knowledge, something to tilt the scales back in favor of the living. My thoughts turned to the local historian, Mr. Abrams, a man whose family roots were as old as the town itself. If anyone held the keys to the Chupacabra's origins, it would be him. His home, a repository of local history and artifacts, sat on the edge of town a testament to the generations that had weathered the area's mysteries. Mr. Abrams welcomed me with a wary curiosity, his eyes reflecting a lifetime of stories untold. As I laid out my findings, the footage of the creature and the historical parallels I'd uncovered, his demeanor shifted from skepticism to a grave concern. You've stirred the ashes of a long dormant fire, he said his voice heavy with the weight of unspoken fears. The Chupacabra is not just a predator, it's a guardian, a keeper of ancient secrets meant to deter those who tread too close to truths buried deep beneath this land. His words painted a picture far older and more complex than I'd imagined. He spoke of the Chupacabra, not as a mere beast, but as a creature born from the very essence of the desert, a manifestation of the land's will to protect its sacred grounds from desecration. The attacks, the bloodletting, they're not random acts of violence, Mr. Abrams continued, his eyes locked on mine. They're warnings, a reminder of the pact between the land and the ancient peoples who once called it home. A pact that's been forgotten, broken by modern encroachments. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the room, Mr. Abrams shared tales of the ancient civilizations that had thrived in the area, their symbiotic relationship with the land, and their eventual downfall. The Chupacabra, he posited, was a relic of their legacy, a protector of their sacred sites, now disturbed by the relentless advance of the modern world. The historian's story added a new layer of depth to the mystery, suggesting the creature's motivations were rooted in something far beyond mere survival or production. It was a guardian of the past, enacting retribution against those who dared to forget the sanctity of the land. Armed with this new understanding, I realized that stopping the Chupacabra required more than just tracking it down. It necessitated a respect for the ancient balances that had been disrupted, a challenge far greater than I had anticipated. As I left Mr. Abrams' home, the night enveloped me once more its darkness now filled with the echoes of ancient whispers. The desert, with all its secrets and shadows, seemed to watch me, a silent observer to the unfolding drama. 
I knew then that my next steps were not just about survival or uncovering a sensational story. They were about restoring a balance long lost. Yet even as this revelation settled in my heart, an urgent call from the local sheriff shattered the night's fragile peace. Another attack, more brutal than the others, had occurred, and this time there were human victims. The stakes had been raised, and as I raced towards the scene, I couldn't shake the feeling that the chupacabra was no longer just hunting. It was sending a message, a declaration that the battle for the soul of the desert had begun. The night was oppressively silent as I made my way to the scene of the latest attack, a silence that seemed to cloak the desert in anticipation of something dreadful. The sheriff's call had been urgent, tinged with an undercurrent of fear I hadn't detected before. Whatever had happened, it was clear that the situation had escalated dangerously. Upon arrival, the scene that greeted me was one of chaos and terror. Police lights sliced through the darkness, illuminating the grim tableau with intermittent flashes of stark reality. The victim, a respected member of the community, lay at the center, his body a testament to the chupacabra's escalating aggression. The dual puncture wounds, now gruesomely familiar, were present, but there was a ferocity to the attack that went beyond anything previously recorded. It was as if the creature was no longer merely hunting, but declaring war. As I stood there, absorbing the horror, the weight of the situation settled heavily upon me. This was no guardian of ancient secrets. This was a predator, pure and simple. A creature driven by instincts and needs we could barely comprehend. Its actions not a message, but a demonstration of power and territory. The sheriff, his face drawn and pale in the flashing lights, approached me. We're out of our depth here, he admitted, his voice barely audible above the low murmur of his deputies. This thing, whatever it is, it's not stopping. And now, it's not just the livestock it's after. His words hung in the air, a chilling acknowledgement of the dire situation we faced. The chupacabra was no longer an elusive menace preying on animals in the dead of night. It had crossed a threshold, boldly challenging the human inhabitants of this land. Fueled by a desperate need for answers and a resolve to confront this nightmare, I made a decision. I would seek out the chupacabra, not as prey, but as a challenger. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and the determination to face this terror head on, I ventured into the desert, following the trail of destruction left in the creature's wake. The desert at night is a world unto itself, a landscape of shadows and whispers where life and death dance in a delicate balance. But as I moved deeper into the wilderness, that balance was shattered by the palpable sense of being hunted. Every rustle of the wind, every shift in the shadows, felt like the predator's breath on my neck. Then, without warning, it was upon me. The chupacabra emerged from the shadows like a specter of death, its eyes burning with a malevolent intelligence that froze my blood. It was larger than I'd imagined, a nightmare made flesh, its form a grotesque parody of the natural world. This was no guardian. This was nature's fury incarnate, a creature forged from the darkest corners of evolutionary necessity. We stood there, predator and human, locked in a moment of primal recognition. In its gaze, I saw not just a hunger for blood, but a deep, burning rage against the encroachments that had driven it to this point. It was a creature pushed to the brink its actions a response to a world that no longer had a place for it. The standoff was brief but eternally significant, a moment in which the boundary between hunter and hunted blurred. Then, with a snarl that seemed to shake the very ground, the chupacabra lunged, a blur of speed and power that left me with no option but to flee. I ran with the creature hot on my heels, every instinct screaming for survival. The desert, once a place of stark beauty, was now a labyrinth of terror, each turn potentially my last. The chase seemed to stretch for an eternity, a desperate race for life under the uncaring gaze of the moon. And when the end came, it was sudden and unexpected. A cliff edge hidden by the darkness loomed ahead, and with a final burst of adrenaline, I leapt, the ground disappearing beneath me as I tumbled into the abyss. The fall was a rush of wind and fear, ending abruptly 
as I crashed into the waters of a hidden river below. The cold shock of the water snapped me back to reality, and as I surfaced, gasping for breath, I realized I had escaped. But the relief was short-lived, for as I looked back towards the cliff, the silhouette of the chupacabra watched from above, its eyes glowing with a promise of unfinished business. As I made my way to the safety of the shore, the realization hit me. This was not just a battle for survival, it was a war for dominion over the shadows of the world. The chupacabra, a creature of myth and nightmare, had marked me, and as I limped back towards the lights of the town, I knew that the true horror had only just begun. The night was now a realm of fear, and I, its latest quarry, had been initiated into a dance with shadows from which there was no escape. The water's chill lingered on my skin as I made my way back to the town, each step a testament to the night's harrowing escape. My mind raced with the encounter, replaying the moment the chupacabra had lunged, its form a blur of primal ferocity. The creature was more than a mere predator. It was a force of nature, a reminder of the wild, untamed darkness that lay just beyond the reach of civilization's light. My return to the town was met with a mix of relief and dread. The relief of having survived, and the dread of what was yet to come. The attack had shifted something fundamental in the town's atmosphere. Fear hung heavy in the air, a palpable tension that seeped into every conversation, every glance. The chupacabra's escalation from livestock to human prey had marked a turning point, a declaration of war not just on the town, but on humanity's presumption of dominion over the natural world. In the cold light of day, with the town stirring uneasily into activity, I sought out the sheriff. Together, we pored over the maps of the surrounding area, tracing the patterns of the attacks in an attempt to predict the creature's next move. It was a strategy born of desperation, an attempt to impose logic on a situation that defied understanding. The creature's not just hunting, it's sending a message, the sheriff mused, his finger tracing the sights of the attacks. It's not random. There's a pattern here, a method to its madness. The realization struck me with the force of a physical blow. The chupacabra wasn't merely a predator driven by hunger. It was intelligent, strategic, and in its own way, purposeful. The attacks were calculated, each one a chess move in a game we were only just beginning to understand. With this grim understanding, we formulated a plan. A team would be assembled, a mix of law enforcement and volunteers, armed and prepared to confront the creature. It was a dangerous gambit, one that carried the risk of further provoking the chupacabra, but it was a risk we had to take. The town could not live under the shadow of fear. The cycle of violence had to be broken. As night descended, the team took up positions around the perimeter of the town, the darkness teeming with unseen dangers. The air was thick with tension, each rustle of the wind a potential harbinger of the creature's approach. My role was to lure the chupacabra, to use myself as bait in a desperate attempt to draw it into the open. Armed with only a flashlight and a hastily muttered prayer, I ventured into the night, my steps carrying me beyond the safety of the town's lights. The desert, a vast expanse of shadows and secrets, seemed to watch with bated breath. Then. Without warning, it struck. Not with the ferocity of our previous encounters, but with a cunning stealth that left us reeling. The chupacabra attacked not from the front, but from the shadows, its movements a blur of speed and precision that bypassed our defenses and plunged the town into chaos. The battle was swift and brutal, a clash of human determination against a force of nature's fury. The creature, though outnumbered, fought with a terrifying intelligence, targeting and incapacitating with surgical precision. In the end, as the first light of dawn crept across the sky, the chupacabra vanished as suddenly as it had appeared, leaving behind a town forever changed. The cost had been high, both in lives and in the innocence lost to the night's terror. In the aftermath, as we counted the cost of our confrontation, the truth was inescapable. The chupacabra, this embodiment of nature's dark side, could not be defeated by bullets or bravado. 
It was a creature of the earth, a part of the wild, untamed darkness that would always resist the encroachments of civilization. As I left the town behind, my story completed but far from concluded, I knew that the Chupacabra's legend would continue to grow. It was a reminder of the fragile boundary between humanity and the vast, uncharted wilderness that lies beyond our understanding. The unseen battlefield between man and myth remained, a perpetual conflict in the shadows where fear, respect, and awe intertwine. The Chupacabra's legacy was not one of terror, but of a challenge. A challenge to respect the boundaries of the natural world, and to remember that some mysteries are beyond our dominion. In the end, the true horror was not the creature itself, but the realization of how little we know about the dark corners of our planet and what lurks within them.